Hi, my name is Marie Romagnano, founder of Healthcare Professionals for Divine Mercy. I'm so happy to present to you our educational conferences that integrate medicine, bioethics, and the spirituality of divine mercy in patient care for healthcare professionals. Because of their importance, even if you're not a medical professional, we invite you to join us. Today, I wish to offer a summary of a presentation by Father Patrice Jachowski. Father Patrice is a biblical scholar, general secretary for the World Apostolic Congresses on Mercy, and the rector or curé of the Shrine in Ars, France. During the extraordinary Jubilee Year of Mercy, he gave his speech, St. John Vianney, Reconciliation, Forgiveness, and Healing, the Church as an Emergency Room. In this talk, Father Patrice discusses the life of St. John Vianney and how he preached and lived the mercy of God. He was first healed by God's mercy and then became the conduit of healing through God's mercy. Pilgrims came from all over Europe to have him hear their confession. He lived in the time of the French Revolution and as a result received little education. He was a soldier, but deserted. There were many dead and wounded soldiers as a result of the war, and many men affected by guilt, including the deserted John Vianney. The army had replaced him with his brother, who died in the war, and this compounded his guilt. His mother had died, and he described himself as an unworthy son who deserves only contempt. At the time, Jansenism, a very rigorous spirituality, was rampant. The focus was on man's sinfulness and not the mercy of God. St. John Vianney heard the teachings of St. Alphonsus Liguori, an Italian bishop who focused on divine love and the mercy of God. John Vianney embraced this true form of the gospel message, not focusing on a despairing side of man and sin as Jansenists demanded. He began to discuss this theology to his fellow diocesan priests. The post-French Revolution people in France needed to hear this message as they were in need of healing. St. John also changed the way priests gave absolution. Back then, priests would wait several weeks to see if the penitent did his penance before giving absolution. St. John Vianney gave it immediately and said he trusted the people and the mercy of God. Local priests were initially unhappy with this. Vianney said that it was God who was running after the sinner desiring them to return to his love. Also, he did not give difficult penances after confession and did mortifications for the people who came to him so that they may repent for the sins. He became convinced that God's mercy is like a flowing stream that carries the human heart with it. When assigned to ours, he was told by his bishop of the need to bring healing and the mercy of God to the people. How could St. John Vianney do this? He was not a theologian and well-trained, but after his own healing, was convinced of the need of the people to hear of God's love. He felt he was not a preacher because of his education, but he could hear their confession and guide them. And so he spent long hours in the confessional. St. John Vianney encouraged all and said, not all the great saints started well, but they all finished well. I invite you to listen to this exceptional presentation by Father Patrice, who has enriched us through his talk, St. John Vianney, Reconciliation, Forgiveness and Healing, The Church as an Emergency Room. Thank you. So good morning, everybody. Yes, I would like to share with you um, the way uh, St. John uh, Vianney, the curé of Ars, the parish priest of this uh, small village north of Lyon, um, became a first, uh, was uh, healed by the mercy of God, by the divine mercy, and then how 
he became a, a healer for the parishioners, for the pilgrims coming from all over Europe to meet him. He used to say, so this is good for all of us, baptized or not, not all uh, the saints uh, did start well, but they all finished well. <laughs> <laughs> he added, we started badly, but we finished well. So included myself, he said. Huh? So this is good for us. St. John Vianney, as all the saints, has been walking in this world. He has evolved, he got transformed, he was healed by God's mercy. First, this will be the first point. He was healed by God's mercy, cured by it. He converted to its touch. So this is the second item, a priest who uh, accepts to convert to the divine mercy. Uh, third point, he was uh, overwhelmed by the mercy of God. And uh, four, his whole being was carried away by the divine mercy. So first point, cured by the divine mercy. Several episodes of St. John Marie's life reveal a wounded, a murdered young man. One of these episodes shows him afflicted by the torment of guilt. Bishop Fouret, using available historical sources, traces the itinerary of uh, the conscript soldier and the deserter in year 189. His long stay in Noé, in the mountains, the death of his mother, Marie Belluse, his return to Dardilly, the house, family house, and the anger of his father, Mathieu Vianney. Since he had uh, deserted, he had to be replaced in the Napoleonic armies. He was going toward Spain and he lost his uh, way. We don't know exactly how, why, with which intentions, but the fact is that uh, he hid uh, um, in uh, a village uh, on the top of a mountain more than uh, one year. And so uh, Napoleon wanted to have uh, a substitute to him. And so his brother Francois was drafted into the army in his place. And he went to the front to Falsburg in uh, close to the borders of Alsace today. And uh, this brother, Francois, died in the fighting. So replacing him as a substitute for him who was a deserter, and he died fighting. You imagine what it can mean for the future of uh, John Marie's uh, heart, really tormented by guilt. We can imagine uh, the weight that the young seminarian had to bear in his heart. A brother died in his place. And then he discovers, uh, returning to his family house, that his mother died of despair. For him, no news from John Murray, and for his brother Francis, who died fighting. And his father, who made him blame 
the misfortune that uh, has befallen the family. He does not permit, allow him enter the family house. He tells him, go first to the cemetery and pray on the grave of your mother who died because of you. The pathos of a pathetic way uh, writing of his letters from the seminary of Verrières to his father clearly expressed this torment of guilt. He writes in 1813, I am the most unworthy of your children. I abused of your goodness in such a manner. I am really unworthy of your kindness. I do deserve perpetual indignation. You imagine what it means for these seminarians. Perpetual indignation something like a, a torment of guilt that would be eternal, hell in his heart. I am the unworthy son who deserves only contempt. Although there was never contrition in the language of the Holy Curé about desertion in his councils, conscience, such an injury could find healing only in the experience of God's mercy. Thanks to God, he discovered the presence of a merciful Christ in his life, and he just presented these wounds clearly to the Trinity, uh, to this uh, merciful, uh, relational, uh, eternal love. He felt connected to the circulation of his, this eternal love in his uh, daily experience, uh, meeting Christ in his encounter with him every day. He used to renew this uh, trust to the mercy of God, uh, curing him, healing him, because uh, he will be speaking of these events, of uh, this uh, torment, uh, of guilt, even uh, late in his life. Of course, everybody is witness that uh, it was no more a torment for him. He was healed, but because he used to renew his trust to divine mercy every day. He used to say, our sins are like grains of sand in front of the great mountain of God's mercy. A grain of sand in front of the mountain of God's mercy. What a disproportion. But he used to experience, to experiment. This disproportion, this proportion of uh, God's love. Only a wound cauterized with the fire of divine love may become that gushing cave that will be able to heal others. In his wounds, later, in his wounds, pilgrims came to us to draw mercy from his wounds. And re remember this famous uh, chapter 53 of Isaiah, uh, already foreseeing, uh, prophetizing the coming of uh, the Messiah and uh, telling in advance that uh, the people of God will find healing uh, in the wounds of Christ, in his wounds, wounds uh, from which um, everybody is witness, uh, the sparkling mercy is going out, 
So in his wounds, in the wounds of this uh, friend of Christ, uh, the people, the pilgrims, were coming from the whole world, uh, from whole France and Europe, to find, to experiment, to experience this uh, sparkling mercy coming out from these uh, cured uh, wounds. The Curie of Ars was uh, inhabited by Christ's mercy. And uh, pilgrims saw Christ through him. They, uh, by confessing to him in Ars, they encountered the crucified and risen Christ with his words of peace and forgiveness. So the second point, this was the first point, uh, cured, healed by mercy. So his own experience. Uh, then the second point was is that he will become a priest, and being a priest, he will convert more and more to mercy. Because the experience of mercy is not an experience of the past, but it needs to be renewed every day. Otherwise, it's no more mercy. It's just fossil. Formed by uh, the famous priest uh, Abbe Ballet, north of Lyon, in the intellectual and rigorist um, mentality of the French priests of the pre revolutionary period climate, he will uh, bring this shine of some rigor. On his arrival in Ars, the first homilies testify that he was a little bit rigorist, rigoristic. Like many other priests of the new post-revolutionary generation, closer to the people and the poor, the Curie of Ars will pass from rigorism into legalism, a legalism that's, that comes from the theology of St. Alphonse of Ligori, the Italian bishop. So from rigorism to legalism. This is a turning point in his life. The Neapolitan bishop Alphonse Ligori had marked the spirits in Italy and Rome by his teachings of moral theology, refocused on the love and mercy of God. For St. Alphonse, the paradigm of theology and of spirituality was uh, the divine mercy, the divine love. It was uh, quite new. Uh, but it's um, Rome hastened to beatify him in 1816. So, uh, while uh, John, uh, Saint John Mary was a young priest, canonized him in 1839 and proclaimed him Doctor of the Church in 1871, in order to deploy the spirituality and theology of the Divine Mercy in the whole Church in the years 1810. And so Rome was aware of a big danger in uh, Northern and Western Europe, where Jansenism was coming again. And uh, with its rigorism, um, imagine uh, uh, near Ars in the area in Farin, only eight kilometers north, um, you had a parish, a parish priest with his um, brother priest. They just founded a Jansenistic sect. Uh, and usually every uh, Holy Friday, the people and the priests used to crucify one woman. 
just one woman, huh? just to signify how sin entered the world. In this rigoristic uh, theology, um, they had a very bad idea, of course, of women, and uh, uh, she and uh, they were just focused on sin and not of, on mercy and on the, the love of God. And this was uh, so the climate around of Ars, a Jansenistic climate, so focused on sin. And uh, Rome, the Holy See, did not accept Jansenism to invade Europe. And so uh, they, Rome proclaimed Saint Alphonse of Ligori, uh, doctor of the church, so to show that the theology of the church, of the gospel, is the theology of the love of God, of the mercy of God, of healing mercy, and not uh, uh, despairing people uh, by focusing on sin. And so the bishop of uh, the Curé d'Ars, Monseigneur de Vie, uh, was invited, as uh, all bishops in France, invited uh, by the Holy Father to attend theology courses in, at the school of St. Alphonsus in Venice. So it was, uh, of course, it was useful, but also very nice to study in Venice. And that's why he accepted, probably. <laughs> he came back very excited, like Father Chris. Very excited. <laughs> by his, uh, what he, he had been learning uh, in Venice at the school of uh, this new theology, and he shared this uh, new spirituality with his priests of the Diocese of Belay. And it appears that uh, uh, the Curie of Ars, John Marie Vianney, was one of the first priests to join and promote this new spirit. Of course, he already was, uh, he had the experience of the mercy of God through his experience uh, as a murdered young man. And he always felt more and more the need to, um, to, to enter this spirituality of mercy. And he found that the magistrate of the church uh, the, what the church was uh, proposing uh, was really his own need and the need of the souls in France and Europe for healing. Because imagine this uh, uh, society, this post-revolutionary society, really wounded uh, in, uh, on the uh, all fields of life, wounded, poor. Uh, the concern of the Holy See to promote mercy, the divine mercy, especially by the proclamation of St. Alphonsus, doctor of the church, to stem the rigor that came from the north, is somehow similar to the efforts of recent popes like John 23rd, John Paul II, Benedict, and Francis to promote the divine mercy as the central nucleus of the gospel in the mission of the universal church. So when it is said that in the confessional he often handed absolution for several days, once delivered from the, in, uh, from the, in, in the context, we must first remember that it was a habit of the Gallican clergy, the French clergy. And sure, he was not so attached to this practice, for his colleagues accused him of giving absolution without control. He changed the way to confess in France. He was surrounded by these uh, Gallican priests. So you know they just uh, used to hear confession and uh, they used to give a penance, and uh, 
they uh, uh, used to verify, to check whether the penitent uh, realized his penance or not after one week, two weeks' time. And uh, after two weeks, they used to give the absolution, the, for, the, the sacrament of uh, forgiveness. But they first wanted to check whether he made reparation. And so uh, John Murray says, the mercy of God uh, trusts the people because uh, uh, Christ's mercy loves his people, and so he trusts. And he even knows that um, you will come again to confess, for example, your impatience against, uh, towards your, your children. He knows that you could, will come again because they will be, <laughs> they, they will not change your children, and you will have difficulties. He, he knew, Christ knows, but he trusts you, and uh, he gives you forgiveness because he trusts you, because he trusts in his own mercy. He trusts in the power of his mercy, that uh, the more you will uh, come and confess uh, with repentance uh, your uh, sin, the more you will find a way to enter your heart and to transform it from, uh, from inside. He knows that. And that's why he, he, the, the Cure d'Ars said, uh, uh, I cannot refuse anymore the absolution. So his priests, uh, fellow priests, uh, were not uh, uh, okay with that because they said, that's why there are so many pilgrims going to him. <laughs> and so he stood out from this legalistic practice of his neighboring counterparts, and he said, it is not the sinner who returns to God to ask him for forgiveness, but it is God himself who runs after the sinner and uh, through his divine mercy makes uh, him return to him. So it is God running after the sinner with his mercy, looking uh, for everybody. Jean-Marie Vianney learned to get out of this Jansenistic spirit. Uh, he was configurated in his youth in and during the first years of his ministry in Eculi with Abbe Ballet. He used to explain in his catechesis, the Jansenists have still the sacraments, but these sacraments have no effect because they think that the people have to be perfect in order to receive them. The church instead desires only their salvation that is why the church orders them to receive them, although they are not perfect. And so this is faith in the mercy of God. So this was the second point. Um, the third point is how he became more and more aware uh, to be overwhelmed by uh, the mystery of mercy of God. Being overwhelmed by events, works, or occupations have become in our time a common expression. We are overwhelmed, and we priests too. Huh? We are running all the time from a church to another one, from activity to another one. We are overwhelmed by activities. Well, and we are exceeded. Um, we have no moment for ourselves. St. John Mary said uh, that he was overwhelmed by mercy, exceeded by mercy, that he had no more time for himself except for, himself, except for the divine mercy. He said that he was carried away by the divine mercy 
one of his uh, uh, expression, a quotation of him, the divine mercy, he said, is like an overflowing, overflowing stream. It carries away the hearts in its stream, in its wake. It carries the wake, the, the hearts. So this was more and more, this became more and more his uh, conviction that the divine mercy, once that you experienced it, becomes a stream, an overflowing stream. We sometimes we see, unfortunately, some uh, overflowing streams, uh, rivers, uh, destroying uh, houses, countries, uh, because of heavy rains. Anyway, here he says that the divine mercy is like um, an overflowing river stream that is able to carry out, to carry away with itself the human heart. So the power, the healing power of the divine mercy. Uh, um, it brings uh, this healing, uh, it brings this peace, this new joy, this reconciliation, uh, this love uh, that is the, the engine, uh, not the motto of uh, your new life. And of course, you are carried away by this new life. And it is uh, another expression of him. He used to say to his, the pilgrims um, in the morning, uh, I already, already bathed. Did you? <laughs> and he said, I bathed in the flames of the love of the divine mercy this morning. I had, uh, I bathed. And so he was um, the testimonies, the witnesses at his beatification used to say that uh, uh, more and more his expressions focused on love of God, on mercy. And he just was expressing that he was surfing on the waves of mercy, just surfing, just surfing on the, you know, on the Trinitarian relationships, crossing our reality. He was just looking at them, contemplating them. We know that he was spending a lot of time in his uh, contemplation of uh, Christ's love, especially before the Holy Sacrament as the body of Christ and the blood of Christ given for him. So the highest signs and instruments, the highest sacrament of uh, the expression of the love of the Trinitarian love. But it was always in, a, in, a, in the horizon, on the horizon of the Trinity. So he was, uh, aware to be crossed, no? Through by uh, the Trinitarian uh, relations, uh, relations, the eternal relations. His reality was, uh, he saw everything in, uh, tr as transparent uh, uh, to the Trinity. And so he just uh, was uh, surfing on this, uh, uh, loving relations, Father, Son, in the Holy Spirit, surfing and testimonying, witnessing every day of this uh, mercy of God toward the poorest of the poorest, to the our orphans, to, you know, there were four cabarets in Ars. Oh, the people of Lyon like to go to Ars. It was a small village, but many, many activities. And so in these uh, um, bars, yes, cabarets, you had, uh, they used to sell a lot of alcohol. And so, of course, in these uh, long nights, um, the people, the parishioners of uh, arts conceived uh, children without knowing. And you had a lot of orphans because they did not recognize them. 
especially girls, um, left uh, aside, no? And uh, so one of his first concerns was to, to save these uh, poor girls. And he founded this uh, school of the Providence to, to, to teach them, to educate them, and hoping that they will become good mothers, um, of course, and uh, giving a good education with the fathers uh, to, to the, the, the other, the next children to come. So a transformation of the society. Uh, um, he also has been struggling for uh, the day off, the Sunday off. Uh, at that, those times uh, in Ars and around, it was surrounded by uh, rich farmers who employed uh, the poor people of Ars. And of course, they had uh, no uh, day off in their week. Uh, Sunday uh, was not off, and uh, they had to work. Of course, they could not uh, come to mass, but uh, the curia of us was not uh, caring only for the people to come to mass. He was uh, he had a universal heart. He, he cared for everybody, and he used to find a mission to everybody, even if they were not Christians, even if they did not come to mass. Uh, he developed the village of Ars um, with the coming of these, uh, the pilgrims. The whole village became a hostel, uh, a welcoming um, a village uh, for the pilgrims. And some of them, he asked them to become, become teachers, uh, to become, uh, to open a house also for, for uh, boys with social difficulties. He, he asked another one to become a driver for the pilgrims coming from Lyon to Ars, and he was not uh, coming to Mass, but he used to find, to discern the charisma of everybody, you know, the grace of everybody, because he, he loved his people, and he wanted them to become what they are called to become through the mystery of life. You know? So he was surfing on... Uh, the divine mercy, and it became a reality all around of him, uh, a development of the village. Imagine that uh, Ars was uh, well known as the Siberia of Lyon, the little Siberia. So it was cold, it was, uh, you had uh, fog quite every day because there are many uh, small lakes, no? the, and so uh, mosquitoes all around, so that nobody, no priest, wanted to accept it to become a, the parish priest of Ars. And no priest accepted. It, it was very, very bad for health also. Eh? It was very bad. And uh, so to convince the priest to come to Ars to become a parish priest there, the countess, um, so the, 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 she was living in a small castle and close to Ars. She, the bishop asked her to pay and to build a new house for the priest. So uh, bourgeoise house, uh, maison bourgeoise, a rich house. So to encourage the priest to come. And uh, of course, John Marie did not need uh, to have this encouragement because he was already very poor. He did not need, uh, when the bishop and the vicar general called him to go to Ars, they just told him, there is a few love for God in this uh, village. Please bring the love of God to this village. That was all. And that was the motivation of John Marie. But you see, uh, the people, uh, statistics uh, is to, uh, made by professionals uh, show that before uh, John Murray's coming to us, there were many diseases and uh, um, uh, death, uh, premature death. 
So the year, the, the middle uh, age for death was very low. And after his death, the same professionals made statistics and Ars became the village where uh, you registered the best health of the area, of the whole area. So you see, we see that there is a connection between the experience of the mercy of God in one's life and the surrounding health. Um, he, so he's, he used to say God's mercy is like an overflowing uh, stream. It carries away the hearts in its uh, stream. His life, his pastoral ministry began early with preferential attention to the poor, foundation of providence for the orphans of the village, and then uh, receiving and listening uh, to the penitence sacrament of in the sacrament of reconciliation in surrounding villages at popular missions alongside uh, with the colleagues, uh, priests. It concludes, yes, first of all, before being so famous uh, for confession, he used to, for about 10 years, to uh, um, help his uh, priests, brother priests, to, um, to, 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 in the missions of evangelization in the surrounding villages. And as he knew that he was uh, very debilissimus, very weak in uh, theology, he never preached in these missions. He just was confessing. But this was uh, um, the way the providence wanted to use so that he may be known by the, the, the parishioners of all these uh, uh, parishes of this area, so that then after 10 years, uh, they were coming to us to find him again and to entrust their soul to him. So you see how uh, it was not just a miracle that the people, uh, we had no Facebook, no Twitter at that time. <laughs> and uh, how could they know, the old people in France, that uh, this priest was so 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 good in dealing the divine mercy it was through experience uh, that they got to to know him in surrounding villages and they came to him later um, he used to say what kind of god his good heart is a notion of mercy always this um, experience of uh, overwhelming uh, grace, overwhelming ocean of mercy. And um, explaining how he was confessing the people, he says, I will tell you my receipt. I give the sinners a small penance and the rest I do in their place. The meaning he gave to his mortifications was clear. Um, sometimes we are impressed by his mortifications, no? eating only two potatoes a week. So I'm his successor, but you will notice that I'm <laughs> <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> and he did not advise it to the people. He didn't know to the priests, usually. But uh, why did he mortify so, uh, his uh, body? He, uh, you know, at that time, uh, the priest had a manual uh, for uh, confessing people. And uh, as he was uh, aware of being very weak in theology, he just obeyed these manuals tar of tarified uh, penance. It means that uh, for 
every kind of sin, you had a kind of penance. For example, uh, an Italian priest told me uh, 20 years ago, he, he studied before the council, and he said, uh, we also had in southern Italy uh, terrified manuals. And uh, for example, when a uh, uh, mother was coming to confess her sins of impatience, because the pasta was not al dente, for example, uh, you, you, uh, blasphemy is, uh, is uh, a national sport in Italy, yeah? national. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, she used to say, I, I uh, told the blasphemy against the Virgin Mary. And the priests used to look at the manual, and say, OK, five uh, Hail Mary as a penance. And then when she added that she uh, lost patience with her children, the priest looked in the, OK, 10 more, 10 more. So 15, uh, Hail Mary. And then you had other um, sins to confess. And the addition was, became big, no? Of course, these priests in Italy told me that they were very embarrassed when, for example, uh, a man uh, came saying, I, uh, I told the blasphemy against St. Peter. The priests looked in the shadow in the confession, and he, he saw in the manual blasphemy against St. Peter and Paul, uh, five Hail Mary, uh, what to do? And so the priests used to say, OK, five Hail Mary, but under condition that you blasphemy also against St. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> this was the terrified <laughs> penance. <laughs> but it's very interesting, the, the terrified uh, penance, because the curé of Ars, um, knowing that he would have to uh, make the, the, the addition of all these penances, he was aware that these penitents were coming to rise again with Christ, knowing the renewal of the baptism in this sacrament, and so that in uh, uh, imposing too many penances as a burden, they would not uh, rise again, but they would get depressed. And so he said, uh, as he was very faithful to the church, this is why he used to say, I'll tell you my recipe. I give the sinners a small penance, and the rest I do in their place. That's why he inflicted to himself so many penances. Instead of uh, uh, giving these penances as a burden to the, the penitents. It is very interesting to see how he was living the pastoral charity, you know, the, the pastoral mercy. So to relieve the people, he used to decide to uh, take part of the burden on himself. Go, go, my friend. I'll do the rest. Here is the pastor bringing much of the burden so that the afflicted sinners can set food in, uh, food in the stirrup, do we say like that, and rise with Christ. The opposite of the attitude of the teachers of the law denounced by Christ, you load men with burdens, hard to bear, you do not touch yourself, uh, yourself with one finger. Mm -hmm. So this is, it shows the way how to live the mission of the church, not only of the priests, but our mission of uh, baptized uh, or believers. Um, we, the, the mercy of God, the divine mercy, heals us and uh, encourages us to heal the others, um, uh, taking on one's shoulders the burdens of the others and not uh, afflicting them more or get depressing them. Uh, this is how we consider the whole healing ministry of the church. Uh, this is an experience of the merciful care. Uh, Pope Francis uh, describes 
this ministry saying, let us return to the sacrament of reconciliation, it often happens when we priests hear our faithful telling us that they have encountered a very strict priest in the confessional or very generous. It means a rigorist or a laxist. And this is not good. It is uh, normal that uh, there are be differences in the style of confessors, but these differences cannot regard the essential, that is, sound moral doctrine, doctrine and mercy. Neither the laxist nor the rigorist bears witness to Jesus Christ, for neither the one nor the other takes care of the person he encounters. The rigorist washes his hands of them. In fact, he nails the person to the law, understood in a cold and rigid way, and the laxist also washes his hands of them. He is only apparently merciful, but in reality, he does not take seriously the problems of that conscience by minimizing the sin. True mercy takes the person into one's care. True mercy takes the person into one's care, listens to him attentively, approaches the situation with respect and truth, and accompanies him on the journey of reconciliation. And this is demanding, yes, certainly. This is demanding. The truly merciful priest or Christian behaves like a good Samaritan. But why does he do this? Because his heart is capable of, of having compassion. It is the heart of Christ. Um, uh, probably you heard of the Abbe Gaston. No. <laughs> <laughs> Pope Francis uh, speaks of the Abbe Gaston, the priest Gaston, a French priest, three times in his interview with uh, Andrea Tornielli in the book, booklet, uh, God's Name is Mercy. Um, he tells about this uh, French priest uh, in the French army during the First World War, uh, World uh, War in France and for uh, the, the French army uh, manages to, to take prisoners out of the uh, German army and one of these soldiers is uh, wounded, very wounded. He is a Catholic, a little bit old. And uh, the Abbe Gaston, this French priest, thinks this man is uh, about to die, I must find a way to give him the sacrament of uh, reconciliation, to give him peace and forgiveness from the Lord. And so he tries to speak with him, he speaks uh, German, and uh, he asks him, so he's looking for some repentance. No, this is important, not to, to receive the sacrament of, of uh, reconciliation. And so the, the German soldier explains him, tells him about his life, and he says he had a lot of women, uh, one uh, after each other, or sometimes uh, in the same time. And uh, of course, <laughs> um, uh, he was aware of, uh, of the, the wounds he inflicted also to some of these women. And so the Abbe Gaston, uh, asked him the question, so do you repent for these uh, sins? And the German soldier answers, no, Father, it's impossible for me. And you know, if it was possible, I would like to die in uh, this nice company. <laughs> so the Abbe Gaston, the priest, is very oh, he's worried about the conditions to be able to give the, 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 the forgiveness without any repentance. Is that possible? No. And so he's worried about that and he finds a way. And Pope Francis explains that uh, the Abbe Gaston 
uh, was just contemplating the face of this man, uh, just contemplating uh, to find a ray of light, to find a, a place, uh, a wound, uh, through which the mercy of God would penetrate his soul and transform it from inside. And so, at the, after a certain time, he finds a way. He asks the German soldier, yes, but do you not, would you not repent of not repenting? <laughs> and the soldier, very deeply, you know, in a, in a deep, uh, true repentance, he answered, yes, Father, I really deeply repent of not repenting. <laughs> and uh, with, on this condition, under this condition, he uh, gave him the sacramental uh, forgiveness from the Lord. So this is interesting because the curé d'Ars also uh, hated, uh, you know, the, the, the way the people used to come with a list of sins, um, just repeating uh, this uh, uh, list of sins uh, learned uh, um, by memory, memorized. He did, uh, some people told me, uh, a priest, an uh, old priest told me in France some weeks ago that uh, when he was young, uh, in his college, uh, there was a, a queue of people waiting for confession, and uh, he said, we just had one list, and we gave it uh, to the next one. <laughs> and uh, the degree of us uh, was against this practice because he says, you do not cry anymore. I'm crying because you do not cry. Um, what is important is not to um, uh, say a list of sins. What is important is to meet, to encounter uh, Christ who died for you. That's why there is a, a statue of Christ um, under the cross, you know, after his death, and you just see the wound. And the pilgrims waiting for one week to confess because there were so many people, they were introduced to the, 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 the relationship with Christ, to look at him, to look at him more mercy, at his love, at his wounds, and just to learn how to repent, contemplating, looking at his wound. That's all. I cry because I offended you. That's all. That's all. And I cry. I am not looking for all the sins of my life. It's impossible. Uh, but uh, I cry for the sins uh, emerging in my consciousness, in my prayer, in my contemplation before you, Christ, before your want. Because, and this is, it was uh, healing. It, it was healing the people. That's why they were coming uh, to this small village of France, even, even uh, uh, intellectuals, even uh, uh, great preachers uh, like the Dominican Lacordaire, who used to say, People are coming to my cathedral uh, while I'm preaching, but uh, after my preaches, they just uh, uh, say their satisfaction, they don't repent. Whereas uh, coming to us, the people repent, they, and they experience the mercy of God, the healing mercy. So, so this was the, the way, but it was so, so used, so um, overwhelmed by this experience of the divine mercy that uh, in, a, in a few minutes, it was very short, huh? his uh, uh, confessions, he used, he was able to contemplate the face of his brother, of his sister, and to say the ray of light and to, uh, to give him the opportunity to cry and to receive the the mercy, the healing mercy, uh, penetrating his soul 
and transforming, changing it uh, from inside. So this was his heart. And observe that it was the same time of um, uh, Freud, uh, Freud, uh, Sigmund Freud investigations. It is very, very interesting to compare both attitudes. Uh, Freud who was aware of people who had nevrosis because of the church's attitude in uh, the confessional. Sometimes uh, rigorists were, were really murders uh, of the, 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 the souls confessing. But uh, looking at the example of uh, John Marie Vianney, uh, we can saw with the, the people and the French could see something else in this experience. And of course, um, then he was carried away by the mercy of God, carried away. Um, the church is called to be, he opened, this is the end of my talk, uh, the door of mercy at that time, a small door um, in a wall of his uh, parish church so that the big sinners, or even the mothers, no comparison, huh? <laughs> uh, but uh, who could not uh, stay for one week in Ars waiting for confession, so he used to take them apart he, um, with the brothers who were in charge of this mission to, to receive the big sinners, great sinners, and these, um, the mothers, uh, in this uh, small, very short uh, uh, door of mercy to confess them apart. So it is a sign uh, of what Pope Francis says. I see clearly that the thing most needed uh, the church today is the ability to heal wounds and warm the heart of the faithful, proximity, conviviality. I see the church as a field hospital after a battle. It is useless to ask one serious injury if uh, there is cholesterol of uh, blood sugar is too high. We need to heal the wounds, then we can tackle the rest. Heal wounds, heal wounds, Pope Francis says. We must start from the beginning. The church is an emergency, emergency room. And of course, all this would not have been possible without the prayer of intercession of uh, St. John Marie Vianney, who was a friend of his uh, people and a friend of God, and always interceding, always praying for, with uh, tears, uh, for his people. So this is the kind of the, the, the testimony of mercy John Marie Vianney uh, gave us a healing mercy.